So I want to talk about uh, uh, the comparison between China and the U.S. and artificial intelligence. And so what we did was uh, back in April, we uh, I, I got five young uh, graduate PhD uh, engineers, and we ripped up all the five Chinese companies and the five U.S. companies and looked at them and saw. And, and I went there from a point of view of my assumption being that uh, I was going to find out how far behind China was compared to the U.S. That was my working assumption. And to my great surprise, there was a lot of, of uh, conclusions that we drew uh, that were very different from our working assumption. Secondly, we uh, got uh, all the guys together and we decided to cut up all the companies and I didn't want these guys to talk to each other until halfway through because I wanted to do them, ha have, it, have it become independent. And we found some very interesting conclusions. Uh, first of all, um, this is what we have decided when we, we talk about AI, what this is. And so, so, so we have, you know, the whole world of physical data for, you know, 5,000 years is increasingly becoming uh, digitalized, obviously, with 5 billion mobile devices, which did not exist eight years ago, and 40 billion sensors, which didn't exist eight years ago because they were too expensive. So the price of a sensor has gone down 95%. And so sensors are in everything. This is turned into digital data, which is very, very slow. Uh, it becomes part of the, the neural networks, which we decided was a basically euphemism for machine learning. And the AI is allowing um, programs, software, to uh, help us to digest uh, billions of pieces of data that we're getting every single day, billions of pieces of data. Um, and, and think about your cell phone has 20 sensors, right? Uh, your car has something between 250 and 300 sensors. And so this is sending out data constantly. And so the people who capture the data and, and create algorithms and manage and manipulate and uh, analyze the data are going to win. And the, to our great surprise, the people who are doing this better than anybody on Earth are, is the PRC. And I want to show you why. Why is China moving uh, ahead? Uh, the PR firms, PRC firms are better at monetizing technology and commercializing it much better than the U.S. Number two, the PRC has a long-term coherent plan for AI. Uh, there's a very clear plan. And I'm, I'm a capitalist, right? D I mean, don't get me wrong, but if you don't have government working on this and universities and the military together, you're in trouble. And, and, and this is the foundation of how America moved ahead, right? Where do you think Caltech and Berkeley and Chicago and MIT came from? The atomic bomb program, the NASA space program, right? Uh, so if you don't have coordination, you're in trouble. So, so to pretend that this doesn't exist is, is folly. And this is what the current U.S. administration is doing. Uh, number three, the Chinese are more willing to surrender data. There was a crisis of confidence in the West. In, in the West, people, are, people got, got screwed in, in, in the GFC. And, and so people are mistrustful of financial institutions. That trust is still maintained in China. And so people surrender data in exchange for something that they expect to receive back, uh, in, in, in particular, uh, their credit rating through Zima Credit, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, Alibaba and Ping An are probably more uh, into the new territory than anyone else. I'll talk about that. Number five, integration of finance and lifestyle is welcomed and encouraged by the, um, by the PRC, much more so than in the US or in the Europe. Number six, uh, the PRC has a clear national policy of proliferating credit. Where did Xi Jinping get his start? He got his start as the party secretary of Hangzhou. He was the party secretary of Xinjiang province, right? Uh, and, 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 and so in, in Zhejiang, he was in Hangzhou. He knew Jack Ma 12 years ago, right? So this is the guy who was you know, very tight with Jack Ma from 12 years ago. And, and so, so I think in part his, his popularity, his his, um, his political push to become premier is a lot to do with, with uh, his success, the success of Hangzhou and Alibaba in Hangzhou. Why, did, why has the U.S. been uh, so hamstrung? The U.S. has very heavily entrenched, entrenched incumbents and lobbying groups. The regulators were on the war path. Do you want to be a board of directors person for one of the tech companies and raise your hand for the tech company to get into financial institutional you know, uh, businesses when the, the, the institutions of the US government in the forms of attorneys general, the SEC, the comptroller of the currency, the district attorney and the attorney and, and, uh, you know, and, and, and the 
uh, Attorney General of New York are giving out fines of $1 billion every 10 minutes with a total of almost $400 billion in fines. There's no way they're going to do this. Number three, uh, many of the PRC companies learned to eat dirt because uh, before Xi Jinping came to power in 2008, we recall, uh, it was a very messy, messy situation in China. Uh, it was very corrupt. And so all the way into 2010, 2011, 2012, we had a you know, tremendous amount of instability with trials and getting rid of people who were bad news. And then lastly, there was no there there. There was, a, there was, a, there was no scrum, right? There was no, there was no defensive line. You, you just went right across the field in China. Now, here's the thing that was so striking to us. Uh, when we finally got the teams together, we have, uh, this is the FinTech part of AI. This is payments, insurance, and personal loans, SME loans, credit rating, money market, wealth management, crowdfunding, and currency exchange. You have that piece of paper in front of you. And then we did it for the US companies, and we were like, wait a minute here, this has to be wrong, we're missing something. So we got everybody together and said, what is missing here? We're missing. And everyone came back like three times. There's, no, there's nothing there. The US, none of the US tech firms has done anything in FinTech, nothing. And I met somebody from Google, and, and, I, and I asked them, what's going on with this? What's the deal? And, and the Google guy told me, who is now no longer at Google, hey, we tried the, the Google Wallet. Anybody here have heard of Google Wallet? Raise your hand. Zero. One, two. Hey, Andrew, there you are. <laughs> so, so, like, what's going on here? And, and, so, and, and so the guy said, it was really hard. <laughs> It was really hard, and, and, and we just didn't, we didn't realize how difficult it was, and so we just didn't succeed at doing it. And, and so this is a really big problem. Even Amazon should be the biggest bank in the world. Microsoft had a 15-year head start. Amazon could have walked into Asia four years ago and taken over. And now they want to come in after Alibaba has already established itself. I'm not that optimistic. Now, this is another thing, too, right? So something else, too, but a lot of the Chinese um, initial uh, programs failed. Alibaba.com in Hong Kong was a catastrophe. It was delisted, right? But they kept moving on. And, and, and the same thing is true with Tencent and Ping On. Ping On Goodcar was a disaster, but you keep moving on, right? That's the thing about these newer economies and younger people. It's like America in the turn of the century and into the 1950s. You keep, you keep trying. You have this, this, there's something about the newness that allows people to have imagination and, and, and the confidence to keep moving forward. And that's something that tends to you know, become problematic in entrenched organizations like large investment banks, large you know, commercial banks, insurance companies, where that institutional courage diminishes. And so this is a big problem. So again, you can see here where there are duds with no replacement. Now, this is also something you have in front of you as well, where I would say to you that Alibaba is at least as good or better uh, in all of the uh, unintentional and intentional data compared to any other company in the world, especially with Pi 2.0. Anybody heard of Pi 2.0? Raise your hand. Right, Pi 2.0 is gonna become the water of China. They just, they just launched it a couple of months ago. This is a, a open AI that's on Alibaba's website. It's in Chinese at the moment, it's not in English yet but it's 103 platforms to be able to do almost anything in financial services uh, and many other areas. I'll talk about that in a minute. But if you look at what they have here compared to what the, 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 West, the Western companies have, it's almost, I would say it's about the same. So let's give that one a toss up. And furthermore, uh, a lot of what we, we concluded here is a lot of AI is very commoditized. You know, no one's impressed that you can translate uh, 56,000 Bibles a second. Nobody is impressed anymore that you can look at two million photographs per second. Everybody can do that, so what? Everyone has an autonomous car, so what? What are you gonna do with it? How do you commercialize it? How do you bring it to commercial use? That's the key. And Alibaba is doing this right now better than anybody else. Same true with uh, cognitive services. As I mentioned, image recognition. Um, pretty much they all have the similar thing, right? Uh, facial recognition. China has facial recognition that's more advanced than any other country on earth with approximately 700 people now facial recognition. Uh, Alibaba launched its KFC uh, purchases. This is gonna be uh, the next wave in the next three years is gonna be the elimination of the cell phone as a payment system because it's gonna move to your face. 
So if you go to KFC in Hangzhou right now, you'll be able to pay for your chicken and your mashed potatoes and your um, Diet Coke with your five pieces of fried chicken. That's the, what we always do. And, and you're going to leave the KFC. How did you pay for it? With your face. So your face is automatically charged without your cell phone. So this is the next wave in what's going to happen. And this is the, this is the thing that Alibaba gets, is that physicality of the things they're buying on the restaurant level and on the uh, fast food level. And then here, uh, uh, lifestyle, right? Look at, look at the offerings that Alibaba has relative to the offerings that the US companies have. So in media, food, travel, entertainment, interaction, search, education, and health, Alibaba and also Tencent are way, way ahead. The interesting thing here, I would say, where Alibaba is falling down very badly and where they really need to restructure is in uh, Hong Kong. And um, Alibaba Entertainment needs to be re torn up, restructured, cleaned up. Because it's been, uh, uh, that's the huge disappointment in the Alibaba arsenal is its content. And so I believe that's going to get revamped uh, very soon. Now, here is the cloud. On the cloud area, you can see Alibaba has a 41% share. And, it, and you think about it, it's the only cloud in the emerging world. There was no cloud in Japan or Korea, Indonesia, India. Why, right? It's really expensive. It costs $100 million. And they decided to have this five years ago. And so right now, in, in global aggregate market share, uh, the, uh, Alibaba's maybe a little bit behind Amazon. But you can see where they're going with all of their acquisitions. And they're now in 25 countries. Um, and with Paytm in India, they have 250 million customers in you know, two and a half years. It took Bank of America three generations to get you know, 40 million customers. Now it takes two and a half years for Alibaba to get 250 million customers in India. So the speed of this is obviously very fast. Uh, Microsoft is coming along fast. Google's coming along fast. Amazon wants to use its AWS to enter into financial services in Asia. They could have done this four years with an open running field. You know, that's the thing. Why were they, why were they not here four years ago? It was, it was open. It was a free, free, free franchise. A bit late. Also, when you look at this, uh, this is something that's been in the news a lot with the, the election of 2016 and a lot of these guys receiving foreign money uh, for advertisements and for placements uh, for the election of, of November 2016. And so uh, I believe there's going to be a lot of pressure to, for these guys to get um, regulated. <clears throat> and I think the one guy who is most at risk is probably Facebook. Um, and, and so there's going to be a lot of, look at the testimony last week in the Senate between Senator Franken and the chief legal officer of Facebook. It's from Friday last week. It's pretty, it's a lot of fireworks. Like how could you not have known people are paying for political content with rubles? And Facebook is like one of the most you know, sophisticated companies in the world and you didn't think rubles is a problem? That, that's a felony. You can't accept money in exchange for a kind of good to influence the election. That, that, that's, a, that's five years in prison for each count, <laughs> right? So this is a problem. So, so these guys are, I call them one trick ponies. So you need to figure out what are you gonna do? And that, that's one of the things when I came, I did a round the world trip with my clients. A lot of them are saying, okay, Google, you're spending $10 billion a year. Show me the products. What are you doing? Show me what you're doing. Google has got to do a better job of commercializing and monetizing all of its R&D if indeed you know, the R&D is the best in the world, then show us something that's gonna be monetizable and commercial. And, and this, this is a lot of the feedback I got uh, from my clients around the world. You can see Tencent is at 17. Um, I, I talked to Tencent recently and it was very funny. They said, well, yeah, we can do advertising. We just haven't started doing it yet, <laughs> but we're gonna start pretty soon. And so that's like, uh-oh. You know, so, so, and then of course, Alibaba's about 50-50. And over there, Amazon is around 2%. This is Alibaba Pi. Now, Alibaba Pi, when I met them, when I met Alibaba in Beijing at their new headquarters, which you have to visit the second floor, um, it, 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 it's a Sung Dynasty a faux art um, of the, um, the springtime uh, next to the lake, that famous one. But all the people's faces are Steve Jobs, Jack Ma, Warren Buffett, um, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, it's extremely clever. And it's like a 50-foot mural as tall as this wall. <laughs> and it's got like 10 of the richest tech guys in the world mixed into the Sung Dynasty faux art. It's really great. 
But when I met them, they said, this is gonna be the water of China. These are AI downloadable so that this row, the first row, can start a bank if you want. This row, these two guys here can start an NBFI. The, the two guys behind them can start a, an insurance company because this uploads into AliCloud and is basically the infrastructure that used to take 50 people. Now you can do it on the cloud and it's pretty straightforward technology that you know, any, anybody with a bachelor's in computer engineering can figure out. So this is financial services, business services, lifestyle services, and government services. So guess who is working with the Beijing municipal government to do the taxes for Beijing? Alibaba. Guess who's gonna be in the center of SOE reform? Alibaba. Guess who's gonna be in the center of a lot of the new uh, insurance companies and financial institutions starting up? Alibaba. Who is the main customer now for CCTV's uh, video? Alibaba. So this is gonna allow them to go into Aliyun and bypass, uh, in terms of unintentional data, the one huge benefit that Tencent has, which was the unintentional chat, photos, videos, pictures, and so forth. So this is where Alibaba leapfrogs. I believe this is where Alibaba got a $10, $15 push in its stock price in the last couple of months. This is Ping On as well. Ping On, I think, is doing more uh, you know, for just about any other company in the world in terms of really transforming itself. Peter Ma is, I think, a terrific visionary. And he's been doing a lot of work in uh, the area of um, transforming a, a clunky insurance company with a state-owned bank into a healthcare company which does insurance and funds the entire experience of the patient, the clinic, the hospital, the doctor, and the pharmacy together as one. And so this is a, this is a really astonishing experiment. Again, the, the U.S. insurance company should have been doing this, you know, 10 years ago, right? And, and so this is what's really staggering why it's taking so long. Zongan is one of my favorite companies. I was very bullish on the IPO for my clients, and it, it, it almost doubled. Zongan has created the dashboard, the transmission, and the electrical system. Uh, they have created the autonomous car for the insurance industry. And nobody else has done this in the world, and they just created Zongan technology 12 years ago. And, and, and everyone said it couldn't be done. And Zongan is a three-year-old company. So, so this is not an insurance company. This is a pay-as-you-go insurance company that's becoming a technology company. And that's why it's so richly valued right now. So pay attention very closely because they have a, a front-to-back solution for uh, creating a blockchain solution for the entire insurance industry. Now, when we did this with everybody else in the, the, the guys in my team, we had two from Hong Kong, one from China, one from Wharton, one from USC. And we got together and I said, I have a feeling that a lot of this is gonna look like the rings of a tree, like a, a star blowing up. And, and indeed, this is what happened with all the companies where all these companies started as kind of flaky, kind of ridiculous. And yet, when they keep blowing out, they have unified silos Everything is unified. There's no silos. Everything is one silo. Get rid of your silos or you are dead. Integrate your data. The data must become the center of the company or you will not survive. And that's the genius of the Chinese to, to, to a large extent, but also Amazon and, and Google, is they have, there's a unified um, data set which is, a, which is the foundation of everything and it keeps blowing out into related services. So this is, this is a digital conglomerate. We are in the age of a digital conglomerate. And then Google, you can see similar here. So you start out as something, Google was, was a crappy, silly search company that was number 16 when Yahoo totally dominated and Yahoo stopped investing. This, when you stop investing, you're dead. This is, this is, this is a, um, this is a, this is a war footing, but you have to keep spending. It's an arms race. <laughs> You gotta keep spending or you're dead. Facebook, very similar, right? Facebook is branching out, but, but you notice with Amazon and, and, uh, and uh, Facebook and also with Google that there is virtually no financial services, almost nothing, right? Amazon is not a payments, uh, Amazon is a shopping store. It's not a payments company, right? Uh, and then here's a really big problem. This is a really big problem that I was looking at the other day and I sort of redid these slides a little bit. Look at the market cap of these guys and look at the market cap of the banks. 
I believe, I just redid it. Um, the market cap of the banks is around $29 billion. The market cap of the guys over here is around $300 billion. So you have a runaway uh, market cap deal where you can use a tremendous amount of your stock to be able to invest in capital expenditure. But more importantly, you have a really big problem of capex, right? Why did BlackBerry die? BlackBerry died because there was too much overcapacity. Uh, the management lost the ball, and they, they didn't drop the ball, they lost it. And they didn't have enough money to invest when everybody else was getting huge amounts of cash flow. This is the problem with the banks. The banks are BlackBerry if they're not careful. And I think the banks are going to get it. I think uh, 2018 is going to be the year of, of panic. Banks are going to be panicked into doing a tremendous amount of M&A. And by the way, get ready, get ready for some questions, because uh, I want to give you guys 10 minutes to ask any questions that you have, and just belt out the questions, because we're a pretty small room. So this, I thought, was a really big problem, because you have you know, Apple and these guys, even down to Google, which is spending, you know, and, and uh, you know, even Alibaba and, 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 uh, you know, and Tencent spending $10 billion a year. Um, the average uh, net income for the banks right now is somewhere between three and four billion. Uh, so they're not spending very much money at all for their capex. So this is problematic for the banks. It's very problematic when you don't have the money. Even if you wanted to get your act together to invest, you still don't have the money. And again, investment cash flow. I want to show you something else. This is the B of A fines. This is Google's spending. The fines that Bank of America paid are equal to the, fines, to the amount of capex that Google has, has spent. So the fines have killed the banks as well, right? From all their criminal behavior during the mortgage crisis of 2006, you know, six, seven, eight, right? And look at look at Lloyd's, look at RBS, look at Deutsche Bank, right? Deutsche Bank paid 20 billion dollars, and there's more to come. So this is also very problematic when your retained earnings is sucked away in federal, uh, state, and you know, cr um, criminal penalties uh, for hanky pank. Number of indictments in um, San Francisco and Silicon Valley for non-sexual uh, related matters. Uh, zero, right? So this is, uh, this, is a, this is an issue, right? So, so that's it. So I'm going to open it up to questions. And so please, you know, be frank. And, and if you have any thoughts or questions or your disagreement, uh, I, I really believe that China is, is clearly probably a generation ahead of the U.S. right now in terms of the integration. AI is about integration. Integration, integrating very diverse types of, of data sets, unintentioned, intentioned, lifestyle, financial, autonomous, advertising. It, it's, the, it's the integration from a unified base of billions of pieces of data which humans cannot possibly understand. And, and so the capacity to, to create algorithms of uh, clustering and um, rate of change, differential um, analysis of, of trends is really the key to this and the way in which, the, you know, we are not visual animals. We are not, you know, uh, video animals. We are economic animals. We are economic actors. And you have to find a way to integrate all this to, to the financial. It, to me, it's obvious. And, and so, so, so the Chinese have done this in, in a way that is more unique than anybody else in, in the world right now. Uh, Alibaba is exporting this in two ways, with the corporates that are leaving China and with 110, any, uh, going up to 200 million Chinese who are traveling outside of China to Europe, the US, Southeast Asia, and, and so forth. So uh, any thoughts, questions? Um, you, Julie, you're nodding your head a lot, so what do you, what do you think? Oh, yes, sorry, okay, yeah, okay. Uh, where, where, where's you, which one? Okay, will China be an exporter of AI tech, or will they tend to keep the value? That's a good, that's a great question. That's a great question. Um, that's a really good question. Um, I, I, I think that, I think if the U.S. tries to import Chinese type of technology, it will, it, it will flop in the U.S. It's a different creature. Here's an example I, I got. I was reading a, a report last night, which I thought was phony baloney, that, well, people in China don't like Alexa. Well, guess what? People in Asia live in really small apartments, <laughs> and we don't want to scream at a thing in the middle of the room because we don't need to. <laughs> 
People in America have big houses. You can, you can scream at Alexa in the next room. The physicality of the room makes the cell phone that much more beneficial and optimal in, in Hong Kong especially because nobody goes home until 11 o'clock at night because they don't want to go home because they have a grandma and their two brothers and a sister and their parents in a two-bedroom apartment. Right, so why would we go to home screaming at a machine in the middle of the room? Now, Alibaba has Genie, right? And, and Genie is selling about 50,000 a month, and, and so good luck with that. So this is an example where it's very different, right? How can Alibaba be so central to our view of the most centralized, second most powerful economy in the world, yet be part of the private sector and partly, wow, foreign owned? Um, What's wrong with that? I mean, here's, here's what I say to people. I have a client in, in, in New York. Hey, you know, uh, uh, I'm really nervous about, you know, all this information going to the government and the military. And I said, which country are you talking about? Because every single bit of information that's going into Google and going into Facebook and going into uh, Amazon is going straight into the National Security Agency and straight to the FBI, and straight to the Defense Intelligence Agency. Believe me, I worked for the NSC before, I know. And so it's like, wait a minute here, and by the way, every single Apple phone, by law, has to have a back uh, door for the FBI. So don't tell me about China being uh, a, a police state. <laughs> we can have a long discussion about that, I feel very vehement about this. So, so th there's a narrative about China that's completely wrong. Is the competition gap too deep in order to compete with China? I'm not sure where that's going. Should Alibaba be afraid of WeChat? Yes, Alibaba is paranoid. Alibaba teaches its people every day. When you come to work, they beat into everybody's head, why should you do business with Alibaba? Why Alibaba? Why us? And so they teach people every day, they beat into their heads. Your competition is Alibaba. You are competing with yourself every day. Be aware and be completely paranoid about WeChat. I happen to think Pi 2.0, Leapfrogs WeChat. That's my view. It's not accepted yet. It's going to become accepted. Pi 2.0 is a really big deal. My team of uh, data scientists said that uh, Pi 2.0 is better than OpenAI, which is Elon Musk's OpenAI company in the States. That's what their thinking is. Uh, how much of China's AI expertise will seep into other... Yeah, that's a great question, too. I, I think that's exactly what's happening. I think uh, uh, Here's an example. I talked with the CEO of Paytm in New York a few weeks ago, and he said to me something really interesting. He said, do you know that Alibaba is already moving on to Alibaba 5.0? They've had one, two, three, four. Deutsche Bank hasn't changed its technology in probably 20 years. Alibaba is moving to 5.0. Guess what Paytm's platform is going to be when Alibaba moves to Alibaba 5.0? Paytm will become 5.0. There's no way we can beat that technology. We're, we're, going to, we're going to enter into it. That's what's going on here. Alibaba pay, buying the, um, the, uh, the, the Swiss company, that's the VAT refund for Europe. What a smart move, right? <laughs> you get all that information. And they did it because I talked to the lady who's the head of IT for Alibaba. She's saying all these Chinese people were complaining, why do they have to fill out all these pieces of paper to get a VAT refund? This is ridiculous. Digitize it. And that's why they bought it. And so not only do you eliminate all the idiot paperwork of getting a VAT refund in Europe, you get all the information. It was a brilliant move. And so, and so forth, right? So you have, you know, you have uh, the same thing with Lazada in Indonesia and uh, Tokopedia and Ascend and Paytm and you know, the companies they purchased in the Philippines uh, and Korea. And by the way, look at the acquisitions that Alibaba is doing. They're not doing acquisitions that are the same thing. Alibaba doesn't want to become Bank of America. Every country is different. The thing they bought in the US, MoneyGram, is different from what they bought in Thailand. And what they bought in Thailand is different from Philippines, and Singapore is Singapore Post, and India is Paytm, which was a wallet. Very strategic and very clever acquisitions that are very different. I do not own Alibaba. I do not have any shares in Alibaba. I don't have any interest in Alibaba. Uh, how, it to, how to apply AI in old-fashioned banks besides banks and internet companies work together? What else? You know, I work for six bank uh, boards, and the problem with six bank boards in 33 seconds is... Um, Think of the turn of the century when Otis developed the elevator. How do you put an elevator into a 10-story building that didn't have an elevator before? Okay, that takes a year of aggravation, a year of tearing down part of the building, 
a year of bashing a door in every single floor, what do you do with the staircase after you finish the, uh, the, the elevator? And, and how many of these elevators didn't function correctly? Why not build a new building? And so my advice to all the banks is basically, you, if you don't, spending money to rejig your bank from top to bottom is gonna be so prohibitively expensive, you should just start a new uh, wholly owned subsidiary with a separate balance sheet, call it standard tech, HSBC FinTech. HSBC Digital, right? A completely digital bank. The fundamental problem is this in one sentence. The banks have an impossible time of reaching out to their client on the social network. They don't know how to do that. And that is the only way to win in this new world. You are all living that in all of your businesses. The banks do not know how to do it. And that's the fundamental problem. Okay, um, we're, I think we're done. And um, if you have any questions, I'm around. And very nice to meet you, and uh, hope that was enjoyable for all of you. Thank you.